Channel 6, WCTV, Thomasville, Tallahassee, and Monticello. For the Miami Hurricanes, wedding is a habit. The wedding in Tallahassee has become a nasty habit. It is good! The Hurricanes win the ball game 17 to 16. Verde pumps, reload, wide open. Touchdown, Miami. This year, we'll find out who's bad. Seminole Preview, a pregame look at today's Florida State Miami game. The Hurricanes are number three, the Seminoles number four. Both teams have a lot on the line. Live from Campbell Stadium, here's Eyewitness Sports Director Bob Warren. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Doe Campbell Stadium. Remember Affirmed and Ali Dar, Mohammed Ali and Smokin' Joe Frazier, and if you're old enough, Carl Hubble and Dizzy Dean, well, you may have something else to remember in the great duels category before this day is out. We're only 30 minutes away from the third-ranked Miami Hurricanes, always an ill will at Doe Campbell, and number four, Florida State. They'll have one eye on each other and the other on the national championship picture. I'm joined now by my colleague, Scott Atwell. Well, Bob, as somebody said, it is the biggest game in the world this weekend, and the eyes of the nation will focus in on Florida's capital city thanks to CBS Sports. To get a handle on this game, a short time ago, we talked with CBS Sports announcer Brent Musburger. Brent, it's always good to see you, my friend. Pleasure to be here. It seems to me that a major sporting event never lives up to the pre-hype or hoopla, but yet I sense this game could. Do you? Well, I think in, in the college game, whether it's football or basketball, you get a better opportunity to live up to the hype. Sometimes uh, the professionals execute defensively so well that they shut down whatever you would expect on offense. But here you've got Bobby Bowden, who's one of the more imaginative coaches in the country, matched up against a defense that certainly has to be considered the best right now. So the table is set, and I would expect that we'll have as much excitement as we did last year in Miami. We talked before that game, and uh, the Seminoles were in there until they lost McManus. Mm -hmm. Brent, uh, teams in this state believe if you win the Florida State Championship <laughs> that you're going to be playing for the national championship. Has it arrived? Has football in Florida arrived at that level yet? Well, I think that uh, there are as many skilled players, running backs and wide receivers and quarterbacks and defensive backs coming out of Florida as any state in the country right now. I would dare say that if I wanted linemen, I'd probably still go up into Pennsylvania or Ohio or check out for linebackers out in Texas. But uh, Florida over the last decade has turned out, I mean, look at the rosters of Michigan and Ohio State. They drop down in here and, and look for running backs especially. So as long as the Florida teams can get them, they're going to be winning some championships. Yeah, and you know, this year it looks like the Orange Bowl is going to determine the national championship. So the winner of Oklahoma and Nebraska comes in ranked number one, and we've got these four other teams, and two of them are playing right here. You throw in Notre Dame and Clemson, and I think one of those six teams is going to emerge as the national champion this year. I know in your private moments, you have had to put this all together. Whenever you do a Miami game, something goofy happens. The Doug Flutie pass a couple of years ago, last you year's 100-yard lateral, which, by the way, I clued you before the game. Yes, you do you did. remember that? You told now, me they were going to throw it, and I was ready. Turnabout's fair play. Okay. What, what, what sort of stuff's going to happen today? Jimmy Johnson will not be able to run the score up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Jimmy. Uh, Florida State will block a punt. There you have it. I know you have an enormous amount of work to do in the next half hour, as do we. And when we come back, we have all sorts of stuff for you. And as you see right now, the skating is going on. The stadium is fill, filling up. So stick around. We'll be right back. Here's a challenge. Would you know a metal building if you saw one? Over 50% of the low-rise buildings built today are metal building systems, and your independent strand builder has built his share. Metal makes sense. It goes up faster, it costs less, and construction is a lot more predictable. You can see for yourself that design flexibility is unlimited. The next new building you see may be a metal building system, and it's probably one of ours. Your strand distributor in the greater Tallahassee area is Ajax Construction Company. 
Nothing compares with Jeep, absolutely nothing. Competitors claim they know four-wheel drives, but don't forget, Jeep invented four-wheel drive, and Capital Lincoln Mercury's got them. The stylish, tough Grand Wagoneer is at home in the city or on the open road, towing up to 5,500 pounds. No other 4x4 can match it. Jeep Cherokee is the horsepower leader in its class, available in two and four doors. The competition can't touch Jeep or the great deals on the best-known 4x4 in the world at Capital Lincoln Mercury, West Tennessee, and Capital Circle Northwest. How long does a John Deere last? How long does a John Deere last? How long does a John Deere last? John Deere's last so long, it's hard to say exactly how long. And right now at Jones Tractor Company, Tallahassee and Thomasville, it's the super end of summer sale with savings up to $250 on RX and SX John Deere riding mowers. Hurry while they last at Jones Tractor Company. Lawn and garden equipment, remember two names, John Deere and Jones Tractor Company, Thomasville. If you've been waiting for the right boat to come along, one the right size with just the right price, now's the time to visit Don's Boats. If it's pleasure boating you enjoy, they have Bayliners, the number one boat manufacturer in the U.S. with 15 to 45 foot boats. If you're the family fisherman, they have Bass Trackers, leading the industry in aluminum bass boats. Or take a look at the Party Barge, 24 feet of fun for the whole family. They even service what they sell. So come on into Don's Boats, 2504 West Tennessee Street, and get your weekend off the ground. And welcome back to our live Florida State Miami preview from Doe Campbell Stadium. One element to this multi-layered story is the collision of two teams that sort of breathe nothing but that rarefied air belonging to only members of the top five. And you got to know how they got there, right? Would that be the old-fashioned way, Bob, by earning it? Uh, very, very hard, I think. So before we show you where they're going today, we need to show you where they've been. When fall drills began back in August, the seniors set the tone in their quest for the elusive national championship. The tribe would take no prisoners in 87. A spirit of togetherness held the team close, while injuries to key players threatened to wreck preparations for the season opener against Texas Tech. We've been beat up like heck getting ready for this first ball game. Well, you say, gee, isn't that tough luck? Well, everybody else is too. Everybody else is going through the same thing. That is, if you're going to prepare your, your ball club. But the cast was prepared when the curtain rose on opening night and a leading man was on hand to make sure no one stumbled. The offense read its part to rave reviews by scoring 40 points. But the defense flubbed many a line, allowing Texas Tech to keep it close in the first half. The 40-16 final proved FSU could indeed put the ball in the end zone, but it raised a few questions and a few eyebrows about the defense. Questions that were certainly answered with authority the following week against East Carolina and former FSU assistant Art Baker. The Seminoles held ECU's highly touted offense to just 10 first downs and for six turnovers, while the offense was riding the legs of Sammy Smith. Smith had the second biggest rushing day ever for a Florida State back with 244 yards, including this 83-yard dazzling touchdown gallop. The Seminoles rolled 44 to three. The following week, it was back home to Memphis State in what figured to be a blowout. But the home folks saw the Tigers come out fired up and keep it close in the first half, thanks to six FSU turnovers. But Dexter Carter's 135 yards on the ground led a second-half knockout punch. And the 41-24 victory made the Seminoles 3-0. But the fumbles and interceptions were a cause of major concern for the coach. You just don't... You, if we'd been playing uh, Florida today or... Uh, Memphis State would have got beat uh, pretty good from them like that. Going into game four in a place they never played, East Lansing, Michigan, the Seminoles knew they had to cut out the mistakes and play outstanding defense against Michigan State and Heisman Trophy candidate Lorenzo White. Well, White was never a factor, and the offense clicked big time, turning the ball over but once, while Ronald Lewis was tearing up the Spartan Stadium turf both with his running and his catching ability. Final, Seminoles 31, Michigan State 3. Nine months after their heartbreaking loss to Penn State in the national championship game, the Miami Hurricanes geared up for in-state rival Florida. But this was a Miami team with a big difference. Vinny Testaverde had taken his Heisman and moved up the turnpike to Tampa Bay. So untested third-year sophomore Steve Walsh was given the task of continuing the glittering Miami quarterback tradition. And it's going to be definitely anxious and, and a little bit of butterflies will be floating around. If there were butterflies, Walsh silenced them in a hurry, hitting 14 of 27 passes for over 200 yards and a touchdown. The Canes mashed Florida quarterback Kerwin Bell all day long, forcing him to sick bay early with a separated shoulder. Now, the Gators had already decided to phase out the Miami series for five years, 
So the Canes' 31-4 win gave them not only the last word, but the last laugh until 1992. After two weeks off, the Hurricanes would try to give Coach Jimmy Johnson a happy homecoming as they traveled a tough 10th-ranked Arkansas. Johnson captained the Razorbacks' 1964 national championship team, and there were rumors he resented the fact that he had been passed over for the head coaching job there some years back. But Johnson downplayed the rumors. I've got great memories for the people there. I've got great memories for the University of Arkansas and for the state. I want to make sure that's very clear. Even so, the Hurricanes played like they had a vendetta of their own. Waltz was outstanding again, hitting on 20 of 28. And Miami roasted the 10th-ranked Razorbacks on a spit, 51 to 7. When the polls came out two days later, the Hurricanes were third, while Florida State was fourth, thus setting up today's spectacular showdown. Oh, Bob, all that's fine and dandy, but it's only chicken feed. The big feast is about to begin. And they are ready to chow down and oh, say about uh, 19 minutes or so. Now, when we come back, we're going to take you to the place, the magic place, where they grow cornerbacks and All-Americans like the Myras and the Kellys and the Cozars and the Testaverdes, the magic city of Miami. Stay with us. Every 1987 Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, Dodge Colt, Dodge Truck, Van, and Minivan in stock will be sold at dealer invoice beginning today. Factory cash rebates and 1.9% APR financing will absolutely end October 7th. Every 1987 on the lot at dealer invoice. Hurry. Warren Lindsay, Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, Quincy. Now is a great time to buy a Train XL1200 Weathertron heat pump. Because of the train, time is money rebate. You'll save energy year after year, and $150 now. You'll also get an exclusive Train 10-year warranty. But don't wait, because the train, time is money rebate, is ticking away. You've waited all day for this, and you know what's coming. It's real, it's hot, it's delicious, and the taste is going to explode in your mouth. This moment of real pizza ecstasy was brought to you by Noble Romans. Carry home a Noble Romans pizza and discover the wonder of real pizza. Noble Romans, real pizza for real pizza freaks. In today's changing financial market, there are few truly golden opportunities. Investors Asset Management is a full-service investment firm capable of turning these golden opportunities into reality. As a discount broker, Investors Asset Management offers stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, as well as real estate-based investment and financial planning to help investors achieve tomorrow's financial goals today. Investors Asset Management, one of the success companies. Welcome back to Eyewitness Sports at our live Florida State Miami preview. Now, Scotty, you're a UM graduate, and my hand to the Lord on this, he is actually a former University of Miami quarterback. Is know. that true? I don't know, Bob. I don't know if junior varsity qualifies for me to even walk in this state. Well, I think it does, sort of. Now, listen, with all due respect, you're my colleague, you're my friend, you're even the godfather of my daughter. <laughs> However, when I think of Miami, you don't exactly well, come to mind. It's understandable. We're talking about the preeminent school in the country that produces quarterbacks, and they have produced many. Many, many a guy who has tortured Florida State over the years. And here's Ken Tomash. Outlined against the sunny South Florida skyline, three horsemen of the quarterback ride. They are known as the Keystone, the Champion, and the Heisman. You may know them better by their given names. Kelly, Kozar, Testaverde, the Miami quarterback tradition. Jim Kelly was the Keystone from the Keystone State. In his first collegiate start as a freshman, Kelly led a 26-10 upset of Penn State. 5,000 yards and two nine-win seasons later, Kelly was a pro football star. In 1983, a redshirt freshman drew the starting assignment for the season opener against arch-rival Florida. And though the Gators beat Bernie Kozar in the Hurricanes that night, it was the last time Miami would lose that year. In November against FSU in Tallahassee, Kozar threw for 243 yards and a touchdown in the win that put Miami in the Orange Bowl where they beat Nebraska 31-30 for the national championship. 
Kozar left Miami two years early to play for his boyhood dream team, the Cleveland Browns. And in 1986, he took them to within one win of the Super Bowl. Kozar's departure cleared the way for Vinny Testaverde. Like his predecessor, Testaverde's debut came against Florida. Like Kozar, Testaverde was on the losing sideline that night. And like that 1983 Miami team, the Canes would not lose another regular season game that year. They came to Tallahassee in November, and Testaverde was simply outstanding, throwing for over 300 yards in a 35-27 win. I remember that game. I had uh, four touchdown passes, and uh, it was just a great day for me, you know, personally. And that, that's something that I'll always remember, beating Florida State in their home field. Testaverde's senior season was like a dream, an 11-0 record. Wins over Florida, Oklahoma, and Florida State, and a Heisman, Heisman Trophy. Trophy. Winner from the University of Miami and Long Island, Vinny Testaverde. But not every Miami quarterback had his way with Florida State. Mike Rodrigue was a Tallahassee native whose 1979 homecoming was anything but happy. The Seminoles picked off four of his passes in thrashing the Hurricanes 40 to 23. Now the offensive coordinator at Godby High School in his hometown, Rodrigue remembers the pressure he felt coming into that game. Florida State was the hardest team I ever had to deal with. It wasn't the Notre Dame's, Texas, anybody we played. Florida State really did generate a lot of pressure for me, and I played two games as a quarterback, actually played, started two games as a quarterback, and I don't feel like I had a very good game on either of the occasions. Pat Walker, who was a receiver at the time, made a lot of big plays, and somewhere early in the first quarter I hit him on a long pass, and we moved the ball and we scored right away, and Things look really good, and then uh, we went downhill very quick from there. Mike Roderick will go down in the trivia books for that game. He was the first and still the only Miami quarterback to lose to Florida State in Tallahassee. Mark Richt is now Florida State's quarterback coach, but he's best known as the guy who filled in for the injured Jim Kelly in 1982. Richt played against Florida State twice, both in Miami and... Both losses. Uh, the first time around, I was a true freshman didn't know half the offense and uh, was uh, just kind of playing on energy and enthusiasm and all that. And then uh, the last year was a frustrating loss. And I played uh, not a real great football game in that. I did some good things, but I did some, you know, things poorly also. Which brings us to the latest model to come off the line at the quarterback factory. For third-year sophomore Steve Walsh, life's been good so far. He's led the Hurricanes to a pair of blowout wins and a number three ranking. But how will he respond to this, his biggest challenge so far? Emotionally, it's not too tough to get ready for it because it's, it's really setting the tone for a, for a great season for us, depending on the outcome of the game. Well, Steve will do an excellent job. Uh, he's really handled the pressure of the first two ball games with Florida and Arkansas, and I'm sure he'll do a great job against Florida State. You know, when things are going good, I don't think anybody should take advice from anyone. Uh, so I'm not going to give him advice because he's doing great, better than I did when I started. you got to look at Steve. I mean, Steve, when you look at him, he looks like a white-collar kind of guy, you know what I'm saying? And, and he's our leader, so we got to, you know, you got to follow your leader. He, he, he's at the helm. He, he's controlling everything right now. You got to follow your leader. If he's a white-collar guy, hey, we all got to pin on our white collars. If he was a blue-collar guy, then we should pin on our blue collars. But he's a white-collar, clean-cut American guy, so that's what we got to do. In the early 60s, he was the Matador, another quarterback, a two-time All-American, the first of those quarterbacks, George, a two-time All-American at the University of Miami. And look at these pictures, scrambling around like this. George Myrie, can you move like that anymore? I don't know if I can move like that anymore. I wish I could. I'll tell you, I really miss the game. And I enjoyed it when I played, and, and of course, I'm enjoying it now watching my son George Jr. play. Those are the good old days. Look at my man scrambling around. Right? Well, I was very young and, and very thin, I think. <laughs> At that stage of the game, I, I weighed about 165, 170 pounds. Has to be uh, nice to be the first in this long tradition now of Miami quarterbacks. My, have there been many? Yes, it really, it really is. And uh, you know the guys that they've had in the past, of course, like Kelly and Kozar and, and Testaverde, and now this young kid Walsh. And I really think Walsh is going to be an outstanding quarterback. He's, he's very intelligent quarterback. He doesn't rattle. He's very calm, and he's got a very nice arm. We talked about the quarterbacks. What about the Miami defense? Folks are really talking about that. 13 years in the NFL, let me draw on some of your experience. How would you attack this Miami defense? Well, I think the way that I would attack it is you'd have to use a lot of misdirection plays. You'd have to use a lot of play-action pass and try to keep the ball underneath. Running the ball against Miami is, uh, is very tough. You know, they're very strong up front. Their linebackers are very active. So I think you have to use play-action pass when you want to throw the ball and uh, use misdirection plays when you want to run it. You talk about your son, George Meyer Jr., the signal caller on defense. I'm sure you all talk during the week after they've looked at the films. What does Miami think of this Florida State club? 
Well, of course, uh, they're very impressed. You know, they're, they're undefeated, and, and they move the ball well, and they feel that they've got a pretty good defensive football team also, along with a good offense. I know uh, all week long uh, they're not taking them lightly. Uh, in fact, they, they probably worked as hard or harder for the Florida State football game than, than they did uh, the, couple, the last past couple of weeks. So uh, they know that there's going to be a battle. They know that they're going to have to go out there and play the best uh, in order to beat Florida State. My, how things have changed. Seems a few years ago it was uh, George Myrie Jr. was the son of that famous football player. Now you're just the dad of the famous football star. That's correct, and I love it. You know, uh, people used to say, well, that's George Myrie Jr., and that's George Myrie Sr. Now I'm known as George Myrie Sr., and he's known as George Myrie. Very quickly. Who are you picking, and what's going to be the score? Well, of course, uh, I'm going with the Hurricanes, there's no doubt. I think it's going to be a real fine football game. Uh, picking the score is going to be hard, but I'm going to go out on the limb, and I think we can beat Florida State by seven points. We'll see. George, appreciate you coming up and talking with us. All right, we're going to be right back, and we're going to talk about the matchups in this game. Very specifically, it is some feast. Stay with us. We'll be right back at Doe Campbell Stadium. How many ways can Snapper help you this fall? You can snapperize your leaves, back and sack them up with ease. It's a snap. Use a twin bag for the chore, bag and wagon, even more. It's a snap. You can clean up after mowing, clear the leaves off just by blowing. It's a snap. With a snapper. Get extra savings now on quality Snapper products during the Snapper Fall Savings Event. See the yellow pages for your nearest Snapper dealer. Success stories mean more when they're close to home. Thanks to Physicians Weight Loss Centers, Tallahassee's own Lynn Herndon lost 84 pounds and 89 inches in 28 weeks. I found the encouragement and empathy I needed. I look great, I feel great, and I like myself. You too can dramatically reshape your figure and maybe your life. Medical supervision is the key. Without exercise or fad foods, you'll lose 3 to 7 pounds per week and no hidden costs. Call Physicians Weight Loss Centers today for a free consultation. You've got nothing to lose but weight. Part of your lifestyle. Capital City Bank Group. Here today, here tomorrow. Every structure is built on an idea. Taking ideas from paper to concrete and steel is what builds communities. It's craftsmanship and a commitment to quality. Bringing projects in on budget and on time. And it's involvement with people who will enjoy the structure today and a community that will live with it tomorrow. We're the Amy Company, commercial contractors building Tallahassee's landmarks. And welcome back as we preview FSU in Miami live from Doe Campbell Stadium. You know, in the last 20 odd minutes or so, we have turned this game inside out, save for the most important element, the players. Well, Bob, when analyzing this game, you nearly have to begin at A and end at Z. Both coaches agree it's going to be a 60 minute dogfight, but there are a couple of matchups that really stick out, and of course, it all begins under center. To this point, they've only been quizzed. Today will be the major test. Walsh is hot, nailing 67% of his passes. McManus, on the other hand, not quite as hot. Dead even, 50-50, and it doesn't figure to get any easier against the Miami Bunch. A lot of speed. I mean, everyone, all those guys back there are intelligent. They know what they're doing, and uh, you can't move them with your eyes. They're not you know, that susceptible to the eye movement. They're going to go wherever the ball is, and that's something we're just going to have the timing throws and good catches. One of those defenders is Benny Blades. Look for him against wideout Herb Gaynor, who fraternized with the opposition during the offseason. We were pretty good friends off the field, but once Saturday, and 2.30 two Saturday, I, I won't even speak to him. Perhaps the biggest matchup will go down up front, where All-American defensive end Danny Stubbs will spend much of the afternoon saying hello to FSU's Mountain, Pat Tomberlin. If Stubbs is allowed to harass McManus the way he did Florida's Kerwin Bell, the outcome will be written. If I don't, we're going to get beat. You know, I just got to do my job. But if I don't do the job, I'm dead. You know, there's no doubt we'll get beat. So we'll just have to play, play as best I can and try to mock him. When Miami has the ball, fullback Melvin Bratton is the man who will be toting it on the ground. You can bet he'll find his way to Seminole linebacker Paul McGowan. 
The Seminoles know the book on Miami's number five. Phil Bratton is is as, as close to Highsmith as you can get. I mean, you know, about the same size. I don't know what he's got in here as opposed to Highsmith, but they're the same speed and things like that. Two years ago, Brian Blade scored twice against the Tribe in Tallahassee. He may be looking for a similar performance this time around. Eric Williams hopes to disappoint. But according to Miami coach Jimmy Johnson, the Seminoles tend to understaff their secondary. They give up a lot in their coverage to try to rush the passer, and so uh, we're ready to take whatever they throw at us. The, the main thing is we got to put the ball in the end zone. But there's no understaffing when Mike Irvin goes up against Deion Sanders. Word is, it'll be one-on-one, -on -one, All-American versus All-American. What I heard, that's what they'll probably try. And from what I've been reading about things Deion said, hey, that's a challenge that I'll welcome, and it should be a real good matchup. In the last two years, Sanders has fared well against Miami. It's a case of rising to the occasion. You know, this is it. This is, this is prime time, and, you know, if a prime time player, you got to bring out the best in me. And when prime time comes down in a few moments, Bobby Bowden is preaching patience. It'll take time to crack the hurricanes. If you're playing great defense, you can have patience. If you're, if you're having, playing poor defense, then you can't, you gotta go do it, you know? There have been times here, not recently, but there have been times where if we felt like we didn't score every time we got the ball, we was gonna get beat. Boy, that's a hard, you can't do it that way. If our defense could play like it did last week, you can pick your uh, spots. In preparing for a team like Florida State, you just prepare for whatever plays they run. Uh, uh, it really doesn't make any difference if it's a reverse or if it's a tailback off tackle. You just prepare your team to stop those plays. I'm hoping it's a defensive battle. It's, if it's not, I know about their defense. If it's not a defensive battle, we might be in some bad, bad trouble. You may remember the other day we did the story of the Ryder family in Tallahassee. Confusing indeed. She a hurricane, he a seminal. If you think she has problems, this guy must be suffering from an identity crisis. Born and raised in Dade County, lived in Tallahassee for 20 some years. <laughs> Educated at the University of Florida. We've known each other for years. Don't give me a political answer. Who's going to win today and why? <laughs> Well, the state of Florida is going to win today, and why? If you look at the roster of these two teams, number three and four in the country, 90% of the players went to a Florida high school. That's a tremendous statement about the quality of athletics uh, and the quality of academics that are preparing uh, these uh, young men to be able to compete, stay in school, graduate uh, from these two fine universities. Every time we see each other, it's always at a Miami FSU game. Last year it was down there. I'll tell you what, if you ever get out of politics, Scott and I have a job for you, my friend. You need to get into sports casting. No Listen, uh, I only take jobs that uh, are up to my skill levels. Uh, I know uh, where I'm in over my head. <laughs> it's so good to see you, Senator. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so Bob. much. That is our show. Ready or not, here it comes. Third-ranked Miami, fourth-ranked Florida State. We'll see you tonight at 6 and 11.